here. Today we're going to talk about the improvements made to LiDAR scanning with Apple products. And we're going to use the help from my little assistant, me. Alright, so today we'll be primarily looking at two apps, 3D Scanner app and Polycam. As for what we're scanning, we have four scenes to look at today. The first is the Cadillac Ranch, which is an outdoor art installation. Next up, we have my condo, which is more of an intricate space with a bunch of nooks and crannies. Uh, then we're going to be scanning my girlfriend to see how well this works with people. Next up, we have the Fremont Troll in Seattle to compare LiDAR versus photogrammetry. And if you stay to the very end, we have a secret scan. And of course, I've uploaded all of these scans in their raw format to Sketchfab. So if you want to follow along and look at the 3D models in real time, uh, I have the links below in the comments to check those out. So we're going to kick things off with a polycam scan of the Cadillac Ranch in Texas. It's this cool art installation where a bunch of Cadillacs are buried in the ground of a farmer's field and anyone can come up and spray paint them. So to start things off with something positive, I want to say how easy this was to actually scan. Uh, with this many people kind of out and about uh, in the field spray painting cars, with photogrammetry it'd be really hard to capture the right photos. Uh, but with LiDAR, it's pretty easy to avoid them. And as you can see from the end results, we didn't really get any shadows from the people in the scan, which was awesome to see. So to jump into our first negative, I think geometry is something that's been a bit frustrating with LiDAR scanning. Despite getting a thorough scan from multiple directions, I st still seem to be losing geometry in every scan I do. I don't know if this is up to the mesh generation algorithm being overly simplified, or the lower resolution of the LiDAR sensor itself, but it seems like it's pretty consistent, especially with intricate details like you can see here with the wheels. So next up, we're gonna push things a little bit further with a larger scan of my condo, and we're gonna be comparing Polycam versus 3D Scanner app and the results they give. So starting off with the positives again, I think it's awesome to be able to do this quickly and see the results as you go. But I put quickly in quotes because this took about 25 scans to get a somewhat usable result. But if you compare that to something like photogrammetry, this probably would have taken thousands and thousands of photos uh, and hours to render properly. So it's awesome we can get results in less than an hour. For the final positive, uh, flat surfaces or planar surfaces turn out really well in both mesh and textures. So you can see the fridge here is uh, very well detailed and the geometry is almost correct. Jumping into the negatives, dense geometry, uh, such as my computer desk and keyboard, get oversimplified by both of these apps. However, 3D Scanner app is a little less afraid to have the resolution and show this dense geometry. For the second negative, uh, shiny surfaces really don't get rendered with LiDAR, which makes sense if you're shooting light out it's gonna be reflected by these surfaces and obviously not uh, scan. Similarly, transparent materials really don't render well with LiDAR scanning, which also makes sense, light goes through transparent things. But you get these weird results where it's either good and you don't get the glass at all, or you get the texture rendered onto the glass and you can see kind of the mismatch that happened here. So my advice is just avoid transparency or shiny materials altogether. So the next issue, especially with large scenes like this, uh, is over time you kind of lose tracking. So you can see this extra geometry that kind of appeared here. That's because we've drifted over time and is trying to rebuild the scene in a new position. And if we were to continue to scan, we'd be rescanning the apartment like a meter over from where it was originally. And it's kind of a bummer because at this point you just have to start over. Finally, thin geometry is not really easily scanned with this. You can see from the chair legs that even though I've gone around them really thoroughly, they just don't create geometry because the resolution of the sensor just, just isn't there. So for our third scan, I decided to scan my girlfriend to see if we can use LiDAR scanning to get scans of people. I'm going to save you some time and tell you now that the answer is no. Uh, 
LiDAR can't capture the intricate details of the human body. And no matter what, you get these weird geometry issues and texture stitching issues, which are actually kind of hilarious. Before we jump into our final comparison, let's take a bit of a puppy break. And I'll show you what I mean by this resolution issue I keep referencing. So what we're looking at is an app called ProTake, which tries to give a portrait effect to your videos using the LiDAR sensor. Uh, but this is a really good example, as you can see in the bottom left black and white image, how low resolution the LiDAR sensor actually is. If we jump to the footage, you can see how this really affects the end result. We get jagged edges. And if we just had a bit more resolution, I think this would fix a lot of the issues with the LiDAR sensor. All right, it's time for our final showdown between photogrammetry and LiDAR. And we're going to be checking out the Fremont Troll in Seattle. It's a pretty large landmark, which leads to a good scan, but also comes with the challenge of how many people are trying to take photos of it as you're scanning. If you think of trying to capture a video or a photo of a landmark, it gets really frustrating. And this is about 10x harder when you have to walk all the way around it and people generally don't know what you're doing. All right, so let's jump into the comparison now. So on the left, you're going to see the LiDAR scan, and on the right is a photogrammetry scan. And we're going to go head to head with four categories to see the winner of each. So first category we have is geometry. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but if we look at the LiDAR scan, you're going to get all these little holes in it no matter what. I feel like I got a thorough scan here, and yet there's still gaps in the mesh. Whereas with photogrammetry, since it's reconstructing from a bunch of photos, it's actually filling in those holes, even if it has a bit of a lower resolution texture to put on that. So I'm definitely going to have to give this category to photogrammetry. Next up, we have texturing, which I feel like is a unfair comparison because one is reconstructed from a bunch of photos. Obviously, we're going to give this one to photogrammetry. Just so we're not picking on LiDAR scanning here, we're gonna talk about the speed of scanning next. And this is especially easy with LiDAR in crowds because it takes a lot less time to walk around something, scan at once and kind of jump out. Finally, we have workflow, which I again have to give to LiDAR. So even though I'm being a bit harsh on LiDAR scanning, I want to say that both methods are still usable in a creation workflow if you put the effort in. For this example, I used the kind of messy LiDAR scan from before, cleaned it up, and then had usable geometry for things like the liquid simulation. Before we get to my final verdict, I want to show you that secret scan I promised. But before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out a small channel like mine. But here it is. 3D depth video recorded with an app called Record 3D. I think this is a really novel use case that you can only really get with LiDAR technology. And of course, like every other model, you can check this out in full 3D on Sketchfab. All right, so let's jump into the verdict. I want to start by saying this is where I think LiDAR scanning is today. And I have no doubt I'll be doing a video a year from now talking how much LiDAR scanning has improved even further. Uh, but I want to talk about two groups of users. First being the average Joe tech enthusiast, and the second being the creator with more of a livelihood built on what they're making. So for the average Joe, I think there's some killer use cases for this. If I can scan my house and visit it a couple years later when I no longer live there, I think that's the future of nostalgia. Uh, it's much better than a video. You can kind of feel it out if you're in VR um, and that type of thing. But I think for most people, they're gonna be turned off by the scanning process and kind of the low quality results they get. I think people are gonna see the misshapen geometry and weird texturing and kind of be like, that's, that's not good enough yet and they're just gonna take a video. Uh, and as for creators, I think it's pretty similar. It's a trade-off between the ultra quick scanning uh, from something in your pocket versus photogrammetry, which does take a little bit more time, but you get much better results and it kind of works for everything. And I think most creators are gonna be drawn to photogrammetry for things like hero assets, for models they're selling, for uh, games, that type of thing. But LiDAR scanning presents an interesting option of kind of those background elements that kind of fill the space and you don't need to see the kind of perfect geometry of everything. 
So I hope in the future I'll be doing a video of how platforms like Polycam and others fix some of the software issues we're seeing to catch up to photogrammetry. Those things like uh, completing meshes, filling in holes uh, with textures, even if they are kind of blurred because creators are already doing that type of thing anyways. But as of right now, I think most creators are better off just kind of using photogrammetry. Um, but yeah. Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, if this video was helpful, please throw a like. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please comment below. I try to reply to everyone. And it's a new year and I'm aiming to put a lot more content out on this channel. So if you want to stay tuned, please subscribe. Uh, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching.